and welcome to another beautiful episode of Just Turned 18 right here on Joy Prime. My name is Loishola Adeyemi and I am your host. Today is going to be a very, very interesting one because today we are back here at the University of Ghana to speak to first-time voters. Now, today we are looking into manifestos. What do these first-time voters understand when we say manifestos? Do they want new things in there? Have they even heard them? As the political parties are about to put them together, what do they want embedded in these manifestos? They are ready, ecstatic, and I cannot wait to talk to them. Let me say a very big thank you to our sponsor, Star Ghana Foundation, the Youth Bridge Foundation, Chartered Institute of Management Accountants, also Association of International Certified Professional Accountants, Petrosol, German Ozone Medical Center, and Shopbox Technologies for making this happen. All this wouldn't have been happening without our good, good sponsors. Now, as I said, we are about to speak to our first-time voters. We want to find out from these people, what do they want and embedded in these manifestos what do they want to see will these things influence them what is written in the manifesto will it affect them in any way let's find out from them now all right guys how are we doing you guys i say it's every episode that i like energy so how are we doing <laughs> all right so guys we just ended the limited registration of limited voters registration and i know that all of us have our cards we do right all right so let me quickly quickly let's get into it how was the experience let me come to you now day day this was very stressful because of the queue yeah so you would say yours was very stressful was the same for you eric no please um i think my our mp organized the bad for us to take her to the venue and also you gave her some motivation and some food and other stuff Hey, Eric said it was free food, though. <laughs> My dear, how was it for you? Same for, for his. Okay. I also have free food. I went late, so I got breakfast and lunch as well. So it was hey, really good. So meaning those who were there three, throughout the day had breakfast, lunch and supper? Yes. Was that the same for you, Daniel? Yes, I didn't really get because I was interested in it. I know it's kind of a way to gain people, but the process was so key. Security was there. It's good. All right. Let me find out from you, my dear. How was it for you as well? Um, it was not stressful at all. I, I went in the early days, so I just did my registration. When I went, there were like seven people there. Because, you know, Ghanaians, we don't like doing things early. We want the last minute vibe. So I went early. I did my registration. Within 10 minutes, I was done. So it was not stressful at okay, all. Okay. Yeah. So because you went early, you had it well. You didn't do the Ghana time. The, what do we even say? Ghana time. You get there and then it's, a, it's another thing altogether. Anyways, so it was good for all of us. And now we finally, finally have our registration card. So now we get to a very, very interesting spot. I always like this place because I say we go back to the classroom. When was the last time you saw a slate? <laughs> Probably in primary one. But well, we are taking you back again. Behind you are your slates. Please pick them up and let's get going. Okay, beautiful. Now on these slates, I want to see. You already know what manifestos are. As I said, political parties tell us what they want to do for us, how they want to serve us through their manifestos. It is also through these manifestos that we decide if we will vote for party A or party B. Let's also not forget that we are very important, especially first-time voters. I have said it over and over again that our voices are very, very key when it comes to elections. So let's write on the board three things that we want embedded in this manifesto festivals that will profit us let's see very very fast let's go so yes, this is still just 18 and as I said today, we are tackling manifestos. Let me use this opportunity to say a very big thank you to our sponsors because we do not do this alone and as we are speaking, they are writing on the board the three things that are important to them that they want to see in the manifestos because I've said it, that political parties are getting ready, they are gearing up to let us know the plans that they have for us when they come into power. So are we done? All right, so please, if you are done, please raise your boards for me. Let me see. Raise your, hey, the girls, you're letting the guys win. <laughs> All right, okay. So I can see on the boards, some have good governance, good health, economy, uh, quality education, economy governance, quality health. I see accountability. I see quality health again. Oh, so I can see that quality health runs through a lot of the boards. Let me come straight to you, Nadele, once again. I see quality health. Okay, so please, I want the, those who want to be 
elected as president, they should tell us what they will do concerning health issues. We realize that there are less beds for patients, and then this is really leading to death. We realize that some hospitals don't have this um, generators and stuff. So whenever there's lights out, there's a higher record of death and stuff. So they should provide such things for them. And then moreover, we don't have some of the equipment they need here to work for those patients. So you see, they have to take them from here to another place. Sometimes it deals with ambulance, issues with ambulance. They don't get ambulance to transport them earlier. Yes, and this results in death. Okay. Yeah. So because of that, I see quality health care also on yours, um, Jennifer. So please explain to me, is, are you also agreeing with her? Or what exactly do you also want to see about quality health in the manifestos? I also agree with her because Last month or so, someone a child died because of easy uh, because of um, light problems, and I'm, I was thinking if there was this plant, uh, there was plant. Let's say even for the light, there's a problem. As the ECG people are saying that it's some, it's a fault. So if there was to be plant, some generated that will help with everything. That child might not have died. Okay. I also see good health on yours. Let me find out what exactly are you also agreeing with them. Yes, I think over the years, the government have done a lot when it comes to health. But then I feel they could do more. NHIS would only cover for some medicines and some conditions. I feel they could, they should better it up to cover almost like 95. Because the average Ghanaian cannot really afford these things and then things are really weird. Okay, so you are saying that from those who have written healthcare, uh, they are saying that they want to see the fact that the national insurance card that we have will be able to work well. You also want to see that they will say, okay, we are providing these things, we are providing beds, we are providing more medicines, generators, plants, before you actually say that you would actually vote. If you do not see these things or hear these things in the manifestos, would that deter you from voting? Let me ask you, Nadeide. Yes, please. You won't vote if you, see, you, you, if you don't hear that? Yes, please. Okay. I'll come back again. But before that, I also see unemployment. I see good education. But I see good ed education as well. I see governance and I see economy. Because I see economy and inflation here, let me come to you and then I'll come back to you. Um, inflation. Yeah. What about inflation do you want to hear in the manifestos? Um, and also, how sure are you that if you hear them in the manifestos, they'll come to fruition? Yeah, that's, that's my point. Um, I want the parties to draft practical policies about inflation in their manifesto, especially about food inflation. Because as students, the money that we are supposed to depend on, because of food inflation, how it's been rising, we are not able to... Um, you know, stay in budgets. We end up spending and then at the end, maybe at the end of two weeks, we have to ask additional money from our parents. Mm -hmm. So I would um, advise the parties to draft practical impl uh, inflation policies that would bring down food prices because food prices are very important for the average Ghanaian. Let's forget about the building materials and all of that, but practical um, policies about food inflation that will bring the prices of food down. Yeah, so that's, that's my major concern. Okay, now I'm seeing the same economy. Is it related to what you said? Yes, it's kind of related because I think over the years, Ghanaians have had a lot of hard times with the economy. Things, inflation was up, some didn't get good jobs and all of that. And then I feel that when it comes to our money, our currency is devaluing against the dollar. So I feel the government should come up with more plans. So... With the economy, we are expecting it is the main thing Ghanaians want to see hmm. because that's what puts money in our pockets. All right. As youth, I see that you said economy is disturbing us. And he has also said inflation is really, really haunting us in this country. But I mean, there was a time that we heard that the dollar has gone down. Didn't it change things a little bit? Because I heard, I also heard it, that they said that the dollar has reduced. It has, you know, gone down. It didn't change anything for you. Um, the government or political parties tell us that they've, they've put measures in place to stop the inflation, to arrest the dollar and all of that. But at the end of the day, it's not sustainable. We don't see it lasting for a longer period because maybe they might do some menial things to calm things down. But in the long run, things will start shooting up again. Hmm. So we are asking the political parties to draft policies that are sustainable, that are long-lasting, that can last us for 50 years Are city will become for like a long period and not just some you know short-term short-term policies that will deceive us yeah who is agreeing with him here let me see by hand anybody who agrees with what he's saying 
Baby, you have to talk to me. Give tea. Yeah. Why are you agreeing with him? Explain. I think I agree because, yes, if you bring out a um, short-term policy, yes, for now, we'll see that it has gone down. But then, let's take it. Some, let's not look at now. Let's, let's look quite into the future some years to come it will shoot up again it will definitely go up and we will be the same people suffering from it again so for now we'll see that yes it has come down but then later on we will suffer the effect again aside the economy has, has there been any other short-term thing that they have said that we've seen because i heard they've said they have said that uh, there have been short-term policies that didn't work for us so i want to know is there any other short-term policy that you think that the last part you're probably subsequent years they told us they'll do and they haven't done it and it has fallen short um, i want to talk about the doom so because yes it's a very important issue mm. you know the previous governments and this current government they made promises about um solving the doom so crisis and then at the end of the day you still see it's coming back again and it's even worse and so these are some of the short term it's like they try to um convince us that they are doing this and this and that and they even sometimes you even hear the government saying that oh it's because of um the transformer and all of that we are fixing it but at the end of the day there is still the doom the doom so is still there and they end up giving it different terms and names to deceive us and so mm. you want policies that are sustainable mm. like about the crisis we are facing i get that but yes. you see even though you say it's doom so we've also heard from uh, acg that it is not doom so it's that it's just the fault in the system it's not that it's doom so there's something that has changed is that you guys don't believe that there's a problem you don't believe <laughs> why don't you believe <laughs> because it's if they, say, they are saying it's um, a fault, they didn't even say it's just in Ghana. They said it's almost in all the African countries. We know Nigeria, Nigeria, they, they have that problem for a long time. But the way they just give us a timetable to know, oh, maybe this is what we, uh, this time will get lighted. They are not giving. They are just saying it's fault. If it's a fault, give us some problem, a uh, uh, solution to the problem. So we know, oh, this one, that. meaning it's not a fault. It's something that I feel they are deliberately doing. Wow. So you think that the doom saw is deliberate. Do you also believe that I've made you rest a lot? So when I come to you, you can give me a lot of things. So uh, do you also agree? Yes, please. I think the doom saw is a deliberate action. You know, over the years, the major cause of doom saw is when the dams subsides in the water levels. But right now, even there is a spillage and we are still experiencing the doom so. So I think this is a deliberate action and then the government should do something to rectify that. Thank All you. All right, before I come back again, let me find out, are there any more short-term policies that you think is short-term that probably subsequent years they had passed? Because you guys have said it so many times that like there have been a number of short-term policies, not sustainable. So any other one aside the doom so? Any other one? <laughs> Let me come to Eric. One village, one dam. What about that? Have don't you believe? And why do you think it's short term? I've, I've not, you know, I've not heard any dam. But the fact that you've not seen and heard doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Have you made your research? Have you heard anywhere? The policy was to build one, um, each village to have one dam. And as to this, even my mind, my I have not seen. Even when I, I've been watching um, news and I've been listening to news and other stuff, I've not heard of any village or any dam so far. Okay, let me come to you. Yeah, and about the um, one factory, one something. It started well. We saw him. Uh, we saw the government bringing about these factories, which was going on. But now we don't see them. And even these factories, crap. People they've sacked most of the workers, and it's not even working. When you go there, it's always bushes and everything. Things they. All right. Now, did is it true? Is that the same for you? Because I see you nodding your head. Yes, please. All right. So that's all you want to say. Explain further. <laughs> okay. So me for the one district, one factory. The only thing I remember seeing was a pineapple factory, mm -hmm. and then I was expecting a factory in my district too. But I didn't see anything like that. Okay, yeah. all right. So, okay, let's move away from that. We've all agreed that probably there are short-term, uh, you know, policies that were there. I see on boards again, aside good health and economy, I see good governance. Let me come to you, Eric. There's governance on there. What do you want to hear about governance in your, uh, or in the manifestos that would influence your decision to vote okay. for a certain party? Okay, um, transparency and accountability. Um, I think the government, each and uh, the political party have to introduce a policy that will, I think, every year, 
before the year, and we have a, a person or someone who is checking each of the, um, the judiciary, the executive, and other stuff. If there is, as a leader, you have to make accountable to your people. So I think the government will introduce a policy that will help each and every political party to, if the political party rather to introduce a policy that will help, that each government has to be accountable and transparent to the citizen before you actually leave the office. But every year, I think when the year ends, we always hear the State of Nations address where we are told what happened in the year. So there already is something like that. Are you saying that what we are told is not the truth? Because at the end of the day, they are still being accountable to us through that. Or you think it, should just, it, it shouldn't be once a year or twice a year, it should be multiple times. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Or now they day? Yeah, please, about the accountability and transparency too. I think before they come to power, there should be a policy that you list your, the properties you have before you come to power. So when you are leaving, the, ch the cross check, it's not now they say someone has stolen money, someone is sleeping with money and all those stuff. Yeah, you need to know that this person has this kind of properties. So where were you able to add this to? They need to be transparent. It's not like, because I'm the president, I don't need to account for certain things. And I'll do things without consulting. They'll just come and tell us that, oh, we are building this. We've used this money for this. They have to let us know. They have to be, they have to be transparent with us. And they have to be account They have to ac account for everything they use the money for because it's our own tax. They are using the money. Yeah. The fact that they have chosen to be our leaders, anytime, any day they are approached, they should be ready to answer us. Yeah. So if they are sleeping and you wake them up, they should be able to tell you, this is what I did with the money. Is that what we are saying? Yeah. Give to why? I agree because the money is the taxpayers' money. We are all taxpayers. It is all of us our money that we are, you know, using to build the country. So if anything, and we also was gave um, brought the government into power. So if anything, we should we should know what our money is being used for. We sh we should know what they are using our money for because it is our money. We are the ones paying the tax. So I believe that we should know what our money is being used for they should be accountable to us now so you, now we are all saying from if i'm listening well all of us are saying that the state of nations address is not the only thing we want at least they should frequent the amount of times they tell us what they are using our finances or our money our taxes into right all right i also see on our board quality education let me come straight to you my dear course you have quality education let me find out what about quality education do you want to see in the manifesto Okay, I want them to build more schools, more infrastructures, and not only the infrastructure, they should, they should provide um, um, learning materials which will make learning, uh, equipping, uh, equipment of the, our skills and knowledge more easy and well. Okay, I see that. I also see good education on your board. Explain to me what exactly she has said that they, they need more infrastructure, more schools. Is that the same thing with you? Yes, uh, but I would like to add something else to it. And then what I'll be adding is pertaining to the courses that we study in the universities or the tertiary institutions. We have made our education system so westernized that it is going a long way to affect our economy. Mm. Uh, Putin once said that Africa's um, land can feed most of the Western or the Europe countries, but our only problem is our mentality, a country where English language is made compulsory and agriculture is optional. Mm. And this is not actually just affecting our, our economy, but it is also going a long, in the long run, it is also going to affect the impact we are making in the, in the students as well. So if you come to the University of Ghana, for instance, there are courses that the university is running, but at the end of the day, the students leave the premises of the school and they end up unemployed. So I actually think that the educational system should be, should be more uh, practical or they should introduce more, um, uh, more practical things that when students leave the premises of the school, they are actually going to get employed rather than making the educational system theory based we finish or we graduate with the theories, and then we can actually boast of something we can do after our years of study. All right, so we all agree with him, right? At the end of the day, we just all want good quality education. I see people nodding their heads. Who is in agreement with him? Okay. All right, also another thing on our board is corruption. 
and I see a, a gentleman in red. He's ready to tell me what about corruption do you want to hear in the manifestos? Um, please, we've heard governments say they are ready to put their presidency on the line to fight corruption. <laughs> they, they say the big words, the big essays, they read everything, but yet still we hear stuff. So we want a political party or a government who will not hide or protect their uh, yeah. members or their government people when they commit an offence. They must allow them to for the law to deal with them if they do if they go contrary with the law they should not try to maneuver and then try to protect them and try to cover them if any government official does something that is corrupt stealing public funds and misusing um, public, the taxpayers money the government should allow the judiciary and those who are responsible to deal with that government official without any interference okay. yes i also see corruption on here i'll come to you but i see corruption on there do you agree with him yes please and then more to the point i think the problems we are facing as a country or all the problems we are facing education wise health wise is as a result of the corruption that is currently happening in the country there are situations where funds that are designated for particular ministries for instance we can have issues of beds at a hospital but if you want to go into the matter you realize that some funds were actually designated for that particular purpose but it is not been executed so corruption has actually been the problem of ghana and africa at large so when it is tackled i think all our problems are going to be solved all right so you said until corruption is tackled our problems won't be solved and you have been shaking your head for a very long time so i want to know are you also agreeing with them yes i agree with them when it comes to the issues with corruption it's one thing that drains ghana's economy but then I feel the reason why we are not able to tackle it is because we allow those in power to select those that will rule issues of corruption. Actually, you are just giving them the green light to have a support from them. So if you select a special prosecutor by a certain political party, I don't think it's the right thing. Mm -hmm. Let private or independent bodies be solely responsible to handle this issue and don't cover up for your people. When you are done the wrong thing, mm. make sure they are prosecuted. All right. So all of us are saying that we should make sure the governments, when they are writing the corruption, they shouldn't just write it down. They should also make sure that when they finally come into power, they follow it. They make sure that when their people do the wrong, they are put to the book. They make sure that they face the music. They make sure that they are punished duly. No covering up for anybody, right? All right. And I also see on a board land degradation. That also brings me to uh, you, my dear, because you said that land degradation, I can see that fixing unemployment issues. We'll come back to that. But why land degradation? What about that so, do you want to see in the manifesto? So land degradation, mainly Galamse. Galamse has been a problem in Ghana and it is still a problem in Ghana. We go to um, our rivers, our rivers that our great grandparents and our forefathers had kept very clean for us what we have been drinking from has been sustaining us now we see and they are brown and different i don't know whether it's multicolored or what those um rivers are now destroyed taking rivers like Ophim Brim, they are totally destroyed and as um some economists have been predicting now that some years to come ghana will be importing um, water Ghana a country that has abundance of water what are we talking about then mm -hmm. we are not serious as a country mm -hmm. so I believe that the government um, the government that wants to come in power and they should check that in their manifesto and they should make sure that as they write it in their manifesto when they come they will deliver correct but as we are all standing here we are saying that as they come into power we will, they have to do it how are we also going to make sure that this is done? And are we always going to wait for them to implement it before we do so? Because Asha said, our water bodies are suffering. If government is not coming to our aid, how are we as youths willing to help? Let me find out from you. So I feel that the youth, we've been silent enough. Mm. So the more we come up to speak about these things, the more it's been done. We go and protest peaceful ones about these things. If we don't do it, they will continue to take your good. They will continue to degrade the land for you. So I feel the youth have to be loud and very, very active when it comes to these matters. All right. Yes, my dear. Um, about the Galamsey. Yes. Okay. For the Galamsey, I, I don't really um, hear, I hear much about it, but I don't really send my mind to because like it doesn't really happen close where to you are yeah. okay okay now let's come back i see on our boards 
unemployment. There's a lot of unemployment in here. Now I'm coming to you because I want to know why are the employment and what about unemployment do you want to see in the manifestos that will influence your decision to vote for party A or party B? One of the main issues in Ghana is unemployment issues. And I mean, university students, even not only university students, most of the SHS graduates are also facing the same. But let me talk about myself. <laughs> For university students, you see around in people with posters and things roaming about, I'm a university graduate, I don't have work to do. And even sometimes, I remember someone told me at home that, uh, this university that I'm doing, it's better I learn a, a, a home trade, a, a trade at home instead of going to post. People that finished long ago are still at home. So if all these, um, luckily for us, I heard from one of the party um, political leader that he's bringing about this 24-hour economy. Mm -hmm. So I think because of that, it will, um, it will convince me to vote for him only if he's going to implement it and not only talk, uh, talk and talk. If he's going to talk and do, then I guess that will be okay for me. Okay, who is agreeing with her? Because she says that Unemployment is a big issue in the country. We've had, had other episodes where we've also spoken to first-time voters who said the same thing, the same thing that unemployment is really, really a big, big problem. That is, are you also agreeing with that? Yes, I'm agreeing because, like, unemployment had been a very big issue. Like, people finish school over years, they cannot get work to do, they're hungry and all of that. But then I feel that to tackle this particular issue, the one district, one factory thing, could have helped it. So I feel any political party that will come in must create more firms and more factories so that youth can be employed to work in those places. So there must be a room where plenty job opportunities have not been created. Mm -hmm. So all right, all right. I see you nodding as well. Let me come to you. Are you also agreeing with him on that? Yeah, I agree with them. And I feel like even if the government can't provide jobs, enough jobs for the people as at now, the government should take another dimension. Maybe give people with ideas like people who are innovative, who can bring I mean, things that will impact society. The government should fund them and then give them money so that they can start, they can start um, small businesses. If the government can build up institutions to employ those people. I think that's one of the dimensions the government can take to help curb the unemployment situation. Yes. All right, Any more? anyone else agreeing? So we are okay. At the end of the day, we want to see that uh, we get good employment. Let me come back to you. Yes. Okay. So if you say there are no jobs in this country, <laughs> mm. you could have equally link up with other countries that have jobs. Mm. Give our members to them. Mm. Let them work for some time. By the time they come back, they'll get even more better of skills to work with. So I feel with unemployment, if they say there's no job, link the people to other countries who need people. Daniel wants to run away from Ghana <laughs> at this point. <laughs> but yes, uh, it's been amazing. So as I said, there has been so many good things on these boards. I've seen inflation to unemployment to good health to economy to, uh, you know, good roads. All of these things are what we want to see in our manifestos as youth. And we hope, and we're only hoping, that when these political parties come into power, we are go they are going to enforce these laws, right? Or these policies. All right. Right, so before I go or before I leave you, we all have our voter ID card, right? All right, so meaning that we are all going to vote. Hey, let me see by hands those of us that will be voting. Hey. <laughs> all right, so at the end of the day, we are going to be voting, right? And we are all hoping that we see these policies in the manifestos that our political parties are going to be reading very, very soon. That's amazing. Thank you so much for speaking to me. So this has been a very, very insightful conversation. We've heard from our first-time voters what they want to see embedded in these manifestos. They are ready to vote. We are hoping that the political parties will hear them and actually embed these things in the manifesto so that we can all be happy and live in peace in Ghana here, our motherland. This has been Justin 18. My name is Lois Ademi. Before I go, let me say a very big thank you to our partners, Star Ghana Foundation, Youth Bridge Foundation, the Chartered Institutes of Management Accountants, Association of International Certified Professional Accountants. Let me also say a very big thank you to Petrosol, German Ozone Medical Center, and finally our last sponsor, Chobox Technologies, for also putting this together. We couldn't have done this without them. Until I see you next time in your area, my name is Lois Ademi and this is Justin 18. See you same time. Bye.